posted a video of the Nisna 500 SV Meridian being launched. This week, we've been working with our friend Kevin Martin, who owns Meridian, to do some of the acceptance testing. Since we were doing acceptance testing on Kevin's boat, we thought that we would do a video about acceptance testing. Now, maybe you'll pick up some tips from this video, or maybe you'll have some ideas that you can share with us so that before we start testing the 550, we can update our test plan. Meanwhile, George has been collecting his bag of tools here to do testing on the 550, and luckily you've gotten them all before this, so we we're now ready to do them exactly. on Kevin's boat. Bonnie's so going to walk us go through what's through. in the bag. This thingy is the outlet tester. Exactly, it's an outlet tester. You want to check every single outlet on your boat and you want to make sure that not only do the outlets have power, but that they're turned off by the breaker on the breaker panel that you think they are. Okay. This thingamabob, it says it on it so I know. It's the, this is the gas detector. If you're working with LP gas, which almost all boats have, if you've got a leak, this is a really handy thing to help you find it. You put the end of it near the gas leak and it screams to let you know there's a leak. This, luckily, it's got the cable so I can figure it out. Mm. But this is for to test the ethernet cables on the boat. A lot of boats these days have ethernet cables and it's really handy to be able to check the cables end to end while you're troubleshooting a problem to figure out whether the problem you're having is with the cable or the devices that are talking over it. So an ethernet tester is a really handy thing. Luckily this one has, is labeled as well because this is the USB tester. Now if you're testing USB, some of them are just for data, some of them others are for charging. Uh, this little handy tester actually tells you the voltage so that you can see whether or not it's an acceptable charging range. And then there's the, 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 the this thingy, this <laughs> thing. That would be a FLIR camera. This is an attachment that goes onto the bottom of our iPhones and it turns the iPhone into a thermal imaging camera. This is really handy for finding leaks around portals, but it's also great for checking your wiring. If you put a load on the wiring in a wiring cabinet, for instance, if any one of the wires gets hotter than the other, it'll show up on thermal imaging and show you that that wire is overloaded. You love this toy. I do. I love that thing. <laughs> Next is a thermometer, which we use for the fridge or the freezer to make sure that it gets down to temp air conditioners to make sure that they're uh, cooling in the room the way we expect them to do, things along those lines. It's surprising how many places you use the thermometer. This thingamabob that I have no idea what it is. That would be a TDS meter. And what does TDS stand for? <laughs> TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids, and this is what you use to test the water on the boat, especially if you're using a water maker. The amount of solids dissolved in the water depends and makes a difference on whether or not it's drinkable. Uh, the EPA says that you're allowed to have total dissolved solids of up to 500 parts per million. And this meter tells you how many you've got. When we tested Meridian, we had about 52 parts per million. That's the equivalent of Rocky Mountain spring water. And yum. And the it's, ocean, for instance, is about 7,000 parts per million. And if I had looked a little closer, it says, how pure is your water on the back of it? So I probably could have figured that out. But I have you here to tell me these things instead. Yeah. No need to read. <laughs> Let's see, what else do we have? We have a vo voltmeter, is that what That's this exactly is? What you, that is? You've had one of these for as long as we've been married. A volt and ohm meter checking batteries, chasing down circuits, checking wires from end to end to see if you're playing with the same wire on both ends, that kind of thing. Very handy to have a volt ohm meter on the boat. You've got oh, this pen thingy. That's in the same family. You put the pen anywhere close to a live wire on an AC circuit and it glows to let you know that wire's light. Let's see, what else have we got in here? Oh, a very important bit. This is our dive flashlight. It's a really bright light and you want a good flashlight in your test kit so that you can look underneath sinks and look for drips, look down the bilges and look to see if there's any water in there. Engine compartments. Yeah, check engine compartments, yep. Yeah, all okay, over the place. Let's see, what else? 
Hand sanitizer? It's actually not hand sanitizer. It's a bottle of soapy water. We can use the gas detector if we're looking for gas, but if you're checking a compressed air line, the easiest way to see if a compressed air line has a leak is to spray the joints with soapy water. If the joints bubble, you know you've got a leak. Got mm -hmm. it. And last but certainly least is George's Cherry Pop Perfume? Yeah. So it's a little trick that I learned a while ago. If you want to check your black water tanks to see if they're leaking, just dump some really stinky perfume into the toilet and flush it. And then wait a little while and go into the area where the black water tank and the sewage lines are. If you can smell stinky perfume, you got a leak. And believe me, you'd rather test and find the link with stinky perfume than you would with raw sewage. I'm putting that back because okay. I don't want to take any chances with that getting on us. Okay. So, we're ready to go into the boat and start testing. Okay, can't wait. Getting a new boat is kind of like moving into a new home. You expect to go through and find a few things wrong. The boat manufacturer did a million things to make this boat and they probably got 999,900 of them right. But there's gotta be a few little things that just aren't right and it's your responsibility as the boat owner to go through and do an acceptance test and to create a snag list and work with the boat manufacturer to get those things fixed. Now, key to a good acceptance plan is to document your plan beforehand. So while they're building the boat, if it's a new boat, or while you're looking at a boat, if it's an older boat, put together the test that you want to run. I'm going to walk you through our test plan, and I'm also going to walk you through a few of the tests we're doing here on this boat to get an idea of what we're doing for this one. The first page of the test plan itself actually just has a summary. It shows you all the different tabs that we're working inside of, how many tests there are per tab, how many we've completed, how many we have yet to go, and how many passed and how many failed. Now inside of this spreadsheet, I've got a tab for the exterior of the boat, a tab for the interior of the boat, a tab for the electrical systems, a tab for the plumbing, a tab for charging systems, one for the engines, one for the other systems, audiovisual and web, the galley, instrumentation, spares and manuals, safety equipment, rigging and sails, and alarms and alerts. So let's just have a look at these and talk about some of the things that we would test on each one of them. On the exterior, you want to check for funny little things like just to make sure that there's chains on the exterior deck fills so you don't take the top off and drop, drop them in the ocean. Make sure that all your deck fills are clearly labeled. You don't want to put water in your diesel tank, for instance. You want to spray the lockers with a water hose and spray all the hatches with a water hose and make sure nothing leaks. Um, fill up the drain pans on your barbecue and make sure the barbecue drains out into the ocean and not into your cockpit. If you've got a platform that you're using with your dinghy, make sure the dinghy platform works properly, the chocks line up, and that it's strong enough to pick up your dinghy. Uh, and if you are using a dinghy, check the dinghy. Does it have a motor? Is the motor properly bolted to the edge of the dinghy? Uh, if you're using an electric start dinghy, is the battery that's in there properly isolated? Um, do you have paddles? Do you have life jackets for your dinghy? Also, are there outside showers? Or is there a hose bib for a wash down hose? Things along those lines. Do you have all the covers you're supposed to have? Table covers, grill covers, uh, windless covers, anything that might, might need covers. Are those included with what you've got? Moving on to the interior of the boat, you want to look at all the gel coat surfaces, all the sofa cushions, all the woodwork, make sure that there's no breaks or cracks or crazing. Walk through every square foot of the interior and make sure there's no spongy spots or any place where the floor gives. Jump up and down on any hatches that are internal and make sure they're good and solid. You're not going to fall through them. Um, and then also check the door frames. Do the doors close properly in the frames? Do all the doors that have locks actually have a quick release latch on the inside of the lock so you can't get locked in the boat? Um, do all the hatches have bug screens? Is there a way to keep the mosquitoes out while you're down there? So in general, just look over the whole interior of the boat and make a note of anything that's, that's an issue there. As far as electrical systems, what I've done in this plan, as you can see, is I've divided it into port forward, port aft, main salon, and then starboard forward, starboard aft, and then the cockpit and the flybridge, if you have a flybridge. 
Inside of there, you want to check, as we said earlier, every single outlet, every single USB connector. Make sure that your light switches, if they're labeled, are labeled correctly, and that they actually turn on and off what you expect them to turn off. If you've got slap lights in the engine compartments, for instance, make sure that those all work. Um, and are the switches and the lights all put in a logical place? Are they where you need them? You need to check that for every section of the boat. And then go to the breaker panel. Are all your breakers clearly labeled? Do the breakers turn off the section of the boat that you think that they're going to turn off? Use your FLIR camera and look at the breaker panel and the breaker panel wiring when there's a bunch of stuff running and see if you have any hot breakers or hot wires. Are there any overloaded circuits? Test your lighting interior, test your lighting exterior, um, your running lights, your underwater lights, your cockpit lights, your deck lights, make sure all the lighting is where you expect it to be. So on charging systems, typically there's a lot of different ways to charge the battery bank on your boat. You could be using the alternators on your port or starboard engine if you have both. You could be using your solar panels. You could be using your generator. You could be using a combination of several of these things. Or you could have the boat plugged into shore power. You want to check the incoming charging systems for each one of those sources and make sure that they're working together harmoniously and also make sure that they're all charging the batteries. Check your batteries. Make sure that while they're under charge, they show a charge voltage. Um, find out whether or not the generator will automatically be kicked on when the batteries get to a certain discharge level. You never want to discharge your batteries all the way, so keep that from happening. As far as plumbing goes, the first thing you want to do when you're starting to work on your plumbing is check your bilges. I'm a real big fan of having dry bilges. If something's dumping into your bilge, it shouldn't be. Now, if you do have water in your bilge, the first thing you want to do is taste it. If the water is salty, start looking for a hole in your boat. If the water is fresh, then start looking for the source of the fresh water. And it's also handy if you taste it, if it's soapy, then you know that you probably have a problem with your washing machine discharge or your, dis your dishwasher discharge or maybe even a sink discharge that's coming into your bilge. But if you check your bilge and it's dry to begin with, after you complete every single test, make sure you go back and recheck the bilge to make sure it's still dry. So in the heads, there's a couple of things that we're gonna to wanna to do. We're gonna fill the basins all the way up with water and make sure it doesn't leak around the basin edge. Then I'm gonna open it and make sure it doesn't leak on the main sewer pipe. I'm also looking to make sure I got hot and cold water. I'm gonna get up underneath it with a flashlight, make sure we have no leaks. For the toilets, you wanna make sure that the toilets flush properly and then you want to do the banana tests. Now this sounds kind of crazy, but what we're going to do is peel a banana, drop it in the toilet. There's a thing inside the toilet called a macerator. It chews up turds that are in the toilet. So a banana is a really good approximation. If the macerator will chew up a banana, it'll chew up a turd. And then you just have bananas and water in your black water tank. So later on you can test emptying the black water tanks, even if you're in the harbor you can empty bananas and water into the ocean. If your black water tanks get full, you should not be able to flush the toilet. So keep flushing the toilet until the tank is full and make sure it won't let you flush anymore after the tank is full. Also have a look at all your showers. Are the showers draining into a gray water system? Is the gray water being discharged over the side of the boat automatically like it should? On your engines, if you have one on a monohull, if you've got a couple on a cat, um, make sure that you can easily get to all the strainer baskets. Make sure you can easily get around the engine and up to the places where you need to do things like um, change the oil or use a switchover to change batteries if one of the batteries uh, on your engines goes dead and you want to be able to use the other batteries. And then you really won't be able to test it unless you're out for a sail or a run, but you want to bring the engines up to temperature and run them for quite a while. Make sure that they operate within normal operating temperatures, that you're getting plenty of air into the engine compartment. If you open the door of your engine compartment while the engines are running and there's a vacuum, in other words, you've got to break a vacuum seal to get that door open, you're starving your engines of air. So make sure that you've got good airflow around your engines. As far as systems go, check your windlass. Make sure that the windlass will go up and down. If you have a chain counter, make sure you reset the chain counter and make sure that that's checking properly. 
Also check on your windlass to make sure that the chains are coming up and down cleanly into the chain locker and that they're not jumping the track and damaging the surface of your boat or anything along those lines. For your air conditioner or air conditioners, you want to check the drip trays, pour pitcher water into the drip trays and make sure that they're draining properly. Make sure that your discharge off the air conditioner uh, recycle pump is working. And of course, check your air conditioner to make sure that it will go up to the maximum allowed heat and down to the maximum allowed cool. And you need to do that for each one of the air conditioner systems on the boat. For your water maker. Make sure that your water maker filters are easy to get to and um, also make water, collect a sample and check it with a TDS meter to make sure that you're actually getting good clean water onto the boat. Check all your through holes. Have you got, you know where all the through holes are? Are they properly labeled? Has everyone got a shutoff valve? Are the valves in good shape? Okay, moving on to audio visual. Oh my gosh, the test you could do on your audiovisual system is as varied as the number of audiovisual systems on the boat. But the bottom line is you want to check and make sure that your stereo systems are working properly and that they're functioning where you expect them to function. Check to make sure that the right and left channels are actually on right and left. Check the different zones that you should have. Maybe it's the owner's cabin, maybe it's a, a, a cockpit system or a main salon system or a different system up on your flybridge. Um, check your TVs. Are you using a digital TV tuner? Um, are you using an onboard media system? And uh, web access. A lot of boats these days have a Wi-Fi system integrated in. Verify that you can log on to the Wi-Fi. If you need to get a SIM card to be able to test that, buy one in advance so you can put it in your, into your LTE modem on the boat. Um, but make sure you can get good web access. That's important. In the galley, Test every single system in the galley. Now we had a lot of fun on Meridian. The way we tested the systems in the galley was Bonnie cooked food for the crew. She started by making popcorn in the microwave and then she made chocolate chip cookies and then finally we cooked sausages. So the chocolate chip cookies were in the convection oven and then she cooked sausages on the induction stovetop to make sure that the induction system was working properly. Test in here, right? Test the hops to make sure they work. That's great sausages. The boys will love us. Check your garbage disposal if you have one, your trash compactor if you have one, run your dishwasher and make sure that it's not draining into the bilge. After you get through running the dishwasher, check your bilge again and make sure there's nothing in there. As you can see on the test plan here, I've got one section for the nav station and one section for the helm on instruments. Make a list of all the different instruments you're going to have and then make sure that they can all function. You should either compile or work with the boat's manufacturer to compile a list of spares. Uh, make sure that you've got extras of everything that you think are going to go. And that could be anything from filters to belts for the engine, uh, spare relay switches. We're actually working with the manufacturer of our boat to give us a small amount of each one of the different paints that were used on the boat. So if we have to do a little sanding and painting, we've got the original paint that was used. That works great for a while, but after a while the sun does start to discolor the paint and then you gotta go back and start paint matching. So put together a real good list of spares, list what you should have, and then during your checkout process or your test process, match your list against that. Same thing for safety equipment. Make a detailed list of every bit of safety equipment that should be on your boat. Flares and fire extinguishers and fire blankets and everything down to bolt cutters to cut away gear if you have a problem. There should be a legal list of the required safety equipment in your region. So put a copy of that safety equipment list onto your test plan and verify that you've got every single item on your safety equipment list. Along with safety, you might want to consider putting on an alarm system. At very least, you have, need to have alarms for things like uh, a high water bilge alarm so that if for some reason your bilge pumps don't function and the water starts creeping up inside the bilge, that a high water sensor will capture that and alarm you to let you know that your bilges are filling up with water. 
Now in our case, on Meridian and on the 550, we're using a system called the Siren Marine Pro 3, and it's actually tied into our cell phones so that if something happens on the boat, I get an alert. So this morning while I was having my coffee, my phone lit up to tell me that the boat had moved outside of the geofencing area. Last night before we left, I set a border, an electronic border around the boat and said, if the boat moves past this border, set an alarm. Why would you do this? Well, maybe if you're on anchor, if your anchor drags, or if you want to see if your boat's been stolen. Now this morning about eight o'clock, Rob took the boat off the mooring. He ran it down the coast to the other marina and then brought it back up here just to open up the engines and because he needed to turn the boat around. So I was able to see on the Siren Marine system that the boat had gone outside of the geofence and actually track exactly where it had gone. Here's where you can see on the test plan we're gonna be checking our geofencing. Also smoke alarms, not just smoke alarms. Make sure you have CO2 alarms. CO2 is the silent killer on boats. Any place you're running an engine in an interior space like that, make sure you've got good CO2 alarms associated with your smoke alarms. So they need to be in every single cabin and they need to be in the salon and there needs to be a quick, easy way to test them to verify that they're functioning properly. When you get done with all of your testing, you're gonna come up with a list of issues. Some people call it a punch list. In Europe, they tend to call it a snag list. Like in South Africa, they call it a snag list too. And what you should do is make a list of everything you find during your test process, and then go through it with the people that are selling the boat to you. And either negotiate that you're going to fix it and they're gonna give you a discount, or they're going to fix it on their dime, or you're going to resolve the issues one way or the other. But a detailed list of everything that was wrong during your testing will go a long way to help you get the boat turned over. So, that's the test plan, and we will look forward to seeing you next time we do a video. Thanks a lot.